Lady, but it's Katie and welcome to another video. Today, I forget what we're talking about. <laughs> Today, we are going through my mental bucket. Yes, yes, darling. So, most of the things on this list are not like must do before I die things. They're more like must do or work towards in the next five to ten years kinds of things. I don't like the idea of making a bucket list being so young. Because I've realized that the way society is set up, I kind of don't know what's supposed to happen in life after like 30 years old. <laughs> you know, all of the milestones are before that. You know, you have each grade level in school, and you have a big one of graduating high school, and then you get graduating college, then you get marriage, then you get kids, you get buying a house. Most people are done with those things by 30. So then, like, what are you doing? other than waiting to turn 50. I don't know. So I don't like the idea of making a bucket list when I'm this young because when I turn 30, like I don't want to just have nothing to do with myself. So these are more so just dreams and ideas I have in my head, some things that I want to get into going into the rest of my 20s and my early 30s. Before we get into the list, please know that I am doing a challenge right now where I'm uploading a video every single day for the next 30 days and trying to get my subscriber, subscriber count up to 100. So why don't you press the subscribe button, help me get closer to my goal, and you are now subscribed so you will be notified when I upload tomorrow. I'll see you then. With that being said, let's jump into this goals list. goal is to travel long term. I want to take a long term trip, like multiple, at least three weeks, a long term trip where I can really get myself immersed in a country, in a town, in a city, in a culture, in a language, in food options, and things to do, and things to see, in the architecture, and just the differences between the place where I am and the place where I'm from. I would like to do this either in Europe or in Southeast Asia. The next goal in association with traveling long term is to live abroad at some point. I don't know if this is something I actually want to do, but it's an option. Like I could travel long term, but it could just be long. And I think that I would do a year in Germany or France to get my master's degree super cheap and be able to explore Europe like on the weekends and in my free time. That's what I think I would do. But you know, living abroad, that's another option. And I do think I would pick Germany because they speak Germany what no. They speak English more often in Germany than they do in France, and they're more English speaking in France than in Germany. So I think I would have more opportunity there, although I did sit in French in my school in college, so that's why France is also on my list because I at least understand the language a little bit. In Germany, I would go in nothing. But you know, you live, you learn, you take risks, it's fun. So perhaps living abroad. I'll say that like that. Perhaps living abroad. My boyfriend will get to play basketball abroad and I'll just follow him. Who knows? Another one of my goals is to take a solo road trip. Oh my gosh. Um, this comes from my previous two goals. These first couple goals are all travel. I want to travel if you didn't quite get that. But this comes from my previous two goals. I find it really hard to plan long term trips with other people. It's hard to plan trips with other people in general, but when you're planning on going for such a long time, most people don't want to turn their life upside down for that long. Most people don't have the same goals as me. So one of my desires is to take a road trip by myself before I ever do like a trip abroad by myself just to kind of see what a, a, a trip by yourself is like. You know, it'll be a road trip so if everything goes wrong I can just drive home. I don't have to worry about changing my flight or anything. Like if it all is just in the gutter I can drive home. Um, I will get to see like how I handle that loneliness that I feel like I will encounter if I do a trip to Europe alone. Um, I can get to see what it's like to be alone without having to be alone and not be able to speak the language. You know, take this one step at a time. And I can see um, what it's like planning and affording a trip by yourself. And how I, like the kind of safety precautions that I need to take in order to feel safe. Obviously, I would go with my mace, I would tell people where I am at all times so that someone knows, even if they're, you know, out of town. Um, I might try and, like, make a trip buddy online and go, but even that feels nice. I don't know. Um, I would just have to see, like, what kinds of things make me uncomfortable, and it's much safer for me and a much better idea to me to feel safe and uncomfortable 
three hours from my house than 24 hours away. My next goal, and this one is a little bit more like far reaching, like somewhere in the future, hopefully this might be past my 30s goal, but it is to be a land lady. Yes, I am. I want to be able to buy a house or like a duplex or fourplex. Um, the eventual goal is an apartment complex, but I know that that is nowhere near any budget that I could ever reasonably believe to have, so I'm not even going to put that on the list. That'll be something for me to add later once things have changed for me and I have money to be able to say that that's a reasonable goal. But for right now, it is to just start with a house or a fourplex to buy it and be able to rent it out. Um, I would like to buy it in cash. That's kind of a gag, <laughs> is that I would like to be able to buy it and then instantly start making not profit but to just not have to take my rent money and turn it back over to the bank having a 30 year debt over my head scares me um i don't have any debt from college so i, I also haven't bought a car or anything i have no experience with having debt so jumping from no debt at all to 30 years of paying off brick and mortar kind of scares me so um, that might be something that I look into getting into once I've really saved up a good chunk of change and I can afford like a really big down payment or to just buy the house altogether. But I would like to be a landlady at some point and have that be another stream of income for me and my household. The next one, and this one is also, well, there's not really a time constraint on this, but I don't know. I feel like it'll take a while, is what I'm trying to say. But I want to start a successful online business. Um, mostly I believe that I want this to be selling art or, you know, prints, stickers, something like that. You see a lot of YouTube artists having these kinds of shops and you just see blogs of them like packing orders. It looks so fun. It looks like a great um, secondary stream of income. Working on multiple streams of income is really important for someone going into the animation industry because it's not steady. Um, like inherently it's not steady. Like you could maybe work one job for nine months and then your job just ceases to exist. Like, imagine a regular job, like a bank. Imagine you're an accountant at a bank, except this bank is only gonna be around for nine months. Then the bank is just gone. Like, they're just gonna tear it down. It's not that you're fired or laid off or anything, it's just that your job ceases to exist because the bank is no more. So you have to go to apply at a new bank. That's the way animation works. You're constantly hopping from job to job. And so I try and think of what would secondary incomes be for me that I would genuinely enjoy and genuinely be able to do well. YouTube is one of them. Hi, hello, I'm uploading every day for 30 days. Um, <laughs> running an online art boutique of some kind is one of them. Being just things, just ways to make money that I think would actually fulfill and enrich my life. My next goal is to see success at work. And what I actually see that as is me being in charge of people at my career job, being like a lead designer or a director, a showrunner, just being able to have a team of people who work under me that we can work together to create my vision. That really inspires me, really motivates me, and really wants, like, makes me want to work really hard in my field. Just because I see myself, like, you know, an art business casual is a stretch. Like, a lot of times you will see people wearing jeans and a t-shirt or, like, pajamas to work. So, I want to be in a position someday where, you know, I have a big meeting with big people because I'm big myself. And so I show up to work in, like, a pencil skirt and heels. That, to me, will be a moment of success and a moment of knowing, like, I'm not at the bottom of the barrel anymore. I've built my way up and my career is, like, heavily influential on the final product being made, the final animation, the final show, the final movie, whatever. Next one on my list, and this is a list of 10 things, by the way. I didn't number it as I went, but the next one on my list <laughs> is to be able to converse confidently in another language. I don't feel like I need to be fluent in another language, and I don't feel like that's something that I'm capable of doing. But I would like to be able to just carry a conversation in another language. The two languages that I feel most confident in myself and being able to do it are French and Japanese. I have not ever learned Japanese in like a formal setting. I just watched a lot of anime in middle school and um, in high school, like early high school. 
And it got to a point where I worked at a shop um, in high school where we had a lot of Asian customers for some reason. Most of them were Korean, but sometimes Japanese customers would come in and they would talk to each other in Japanese and I found that I was able to understand them. So I feel like, you know, I don't know Japanese, I certainly don't, but I, I, if, if I can like pick up a conversation that's going on in Japanese, I feel like I should work on that. I feel like that is something worth exploring and something worth developing. And the second one is French, which I learned formally in school for a couple of years. I would like to get to a point where I can speak to a native of either French or Japanese or some other language, you never know, in their language and just like, have a bit of a conversation constantly. I don't need to be fluent, like maybe the next day they want to have a conversation about something else and I don't know any of those nouns and I just don't know what's going on, but to just be able to carry one conversation sort of would really show that I've like done something with all of this language that I've been able to learn. Next goal I have is to write or publish something. I'm fine with it being a novel, a graphic novel, a screenplay, you never know, but I want to be able to write something. I think that I'm fairly good at writing, and this is something that I will get into more in another video that I have planned. I'm uploading every day for the month. Please subscribe if it's more that comes out. But, um, language arts, writing, English, reading, that's always been something that I've excelled at, and I feel like I don't want to see that, like, naturally talented or gifted at it or anything. But it is something that I think I'm fairly good at. It's something that I enjoy. And I like doing the things that I enjoy. So I feel like I should be able to manifest a book. <laughs> manifest something getting published at some point. I have actually written enough to have it be a book. The gag is it was a fan fiction. But like, I, it was a long story. Like, that junk was a novella at least. It was tens to hundreds of thousands of words that I wrote on that. <laughs> I had an editor for it and everything. The reviews were great. <laughs> so I feel like um, writing an actual something to be published, a poetry book, a novel, an episode for a TV show. I don't know. Writing can go in a lot of different directions, but I'm gonna have I've written something that gets published. The next goal is to study gymnastics. I did gymnastics as a kid, and um, we had to stop it because of financial reasons, but I've always wanted to pick it back up. I've always wanted to be a bendy bay. I've always wanted to be able to do like a scorpion and like a splits and like one or two good flips. That would please me. I would be like satisfied for life. Um, I want to be able to do that yoga thing where they like start sitting down and then they end up in a handstand, but that requires a lot of arm and core strength, and I just don't know if I'll ever get there. But I hope that at some point I can find like an adult gymnastics group or gym and join it and like take lessons and get better at gymnastics. And my final goal is actually very similar. I want to learn to ice skate. Yeah, I think ice skating is absolutely beautiful. There are a lot of art forms I think is beautiful. Gymnastics, rhythmic gymnastics, swimming, synchronized swimming, so on and so forth. Ice skating is one of them. And I don't know how to do any winter sports at all, so ice skating would help me. Like, if we ever go up to a cabin, I would be able to do something. <laughs> and I just think it's gorgeous. And I just feel like taking a year of ice skating lessons, it would build up my legs. I could build up some cardio. I could learn a new skill. So that's something that I want to do when I get to be involved and have a little bit more um, experience. I just want to take some gymnastics, gymnastics and or ice skating lessons. And, you know, and so those are my 10 dreams slash goals for the, you know, next 10 years. 10 for 10. 10 for 10. Love it. Love it. Please let me know in the comments down below, what are your 10 for 10? Have you got any lifelong goals? Not lifelong. Have you got any goals or wishes for the next 5 to 10 years? Do you have any lifelong goals? And if so, how do you feel about life ending after you turn 30? Comment tomorrow and you will get to see a brand new video in case you missed it one of the last 5,000 times I've mentioned it. I'm going to move over here like I usually do so that you can click some of my links and check out my other videos. Please do consider subscribing. I'm trying to get my um, subscriber count up to 100 and I really appreciate your help. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time. And until then, to the loop.